welcome to a review of 3.7 through 3.9 and this is going to cover implicit differentiation, differentiating exponentials and logarithmic functions, differentiating inverse trig functions, as well as logarithmic differentiation. So get excited because that's a whole lot of stuff that we're about to talk about. Starting with number one through five, I think it is, which are implicit differentiation. Now those are just fancy words to say that we're not solving for, or what we have is not solved for y. Some of them may be easy to solve for y, others not so much, but either way, what we wanna do is just go from left to right, taking the derivative, and if something is y, then we have to put dy over dx next to it. So here's what I mean on number one. I'm going to take the derivative of 6y, which since it's just 6 and a letter, then it's just going to end up being 6, kind of like 6x would have been 6. The derivative of 6y is 6, but then I have to put times dy over dx. And then I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do the derivative of negative 6x squared, which is negative 12x. And then the derivative of x, which is 1 and the derivative of negative six is zero. I don't need to put plus zero out there. I can if I want to. And so now my goal is to solve for dy over dx. And so I'm gonna add 12x to both sides. Now, we gotta remember our algebra skills here. If I do one plus 12x, like those don't add together. The one doesn't just magically go away somehow. It is 12x plus one or one plus 12x. Then I'm gonna divide both sides by the six that's in front of dy over dx. And again, algebra skills, this does not simplify. In order to simplify, every term on top and on bottom has to be divisible by the same thing. So yes, 12x is divisible by six, but one isn't. So we need to leave it as 12x plus one over six. And that's our answer. Let's make it more interesting. On number two, we have a quotient, which means we'll have to use the quotient rule on the right side. So still, we're using implicit differentiation. So I'm gonna take the derivative of eight y to the fourth and get 32 y cubed times dy over dx, but then on the right side, this is the quotient rule, which is low d high minus high d low over the square of the one below. So I'm gonna put x squared plus four, and I'm gonna times that by the derivative of the top, which is just two x, then minus, I'm gonna put the top, and then times that by the derivative of the bottom, which is also 2x, and I'm gonna put that over the square of the one below. Now, we're gonna distribute on top, but if I think about before distributing, if I'm subtracting these two things, the only way they would completely cancel out is if they were the exact same. So the fact that this is a minus and this is a plus means that after I distribute, everything shouldn't cancel out. Some things may cancel, um, but not everything. So distribute the 2x and we get 2x cubed plus 8x. Then when I distribute this 2x, what I'm really doing is I'm distributing a negative 2x. And so that's going to give me minus 2x cubed plus 8x. And that plus 8x is where we tend to mess up because we forget that we have to distribute that negative to both things in the parentheses. So don't mess it up. So we're gonna do a couple more things on this problem. To finish it up, on top here, two x cubed and negative two x cubed cancel out, leaving us with 16 x on top. We're also going to have to divide both sides by 32 y cubed. And so we have to ask ourselves, what does that mean if I have a fraction and I'm dividing by something? It means I'm gonna multiply by one over 32 y cubed. Think about what division means. I'm not gonna put what I'm dividing by on the top of my fraction. I'm gonna to have to put it on the bottom of my fraction. So this is going to be, for our next step, 
16x over, these two things are going to get multiplied together, 32y cubed x squared plus 4 squared. And so, oh, I forgot my x. 8x plus 8x is 16x. Now, there is something that simplifies because I have a 16 and a 32. And what matters is that neither of those numbers are inside of my parentheses. And so basically it's like, I'm actually like ignoring this part of my fraction and saying, how would I simplify this? Um, and then going back and putting in the rest. So this is going to end up being x over 2y cubed x squared plus 4 squared. Number three has a product rule right here. This is plus a negative 8xy, which may seem weird. It should have said minus 8xy, but it's totally fine. It's whatever. This is the product rule, and this is the first thing. This is the second thing. So once we, when we get to negative 8xy and take the derivative, we're going to have to use that rule. So the derivative of 9y is just 9 dy over dx product rule, 1d2. So I write down the first thing times the derivative of the second thing, which was y. So 1dy over dx plus 2d1. So I write down y and then I times that by the derivative of negative 8x, which is negative 8. The derivative of negative 7 is 0. The derivative of 0 is 0. So you might try to jump to the next step but you also might do that wrong if you decide to do that. I would rewrite this cleaned up a little bit. So this is just negative 8x dy over dx. Really the important thing is that you realize that this is really negative 8y, so minus 8y, which means to solve for dy over dx, we're going to have to add 8y to both sides. If you had it written the other way, you might have subtracted it over and that's no good. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to factor out the dy over dx out of these two things that have them. So dy over dx, if I take it out, is 9 minus 8x equals 8y. Divide both sides by 9 minus 8x. And my answer is 8y over 9 minus 8x. Now, just because those both have 8s doesn't mean we can cancel them out. Remember, every term on top and every term on bottom has to have the same thing that you can divide by, otherwise we can't cancel out. So, because the 9 isn't divisible by 8 or 2 or 4 or anything, we can't cancel anything on that problem. Number 4 we want to do, it has some multiple choice down here at the bottom, so if you were confused about what those were, that's um, answers. But you should definitely work it out first, and once you're done, look at your answer choices. So x cubed is 3x squared. Cotangent y, the derivative of that is negative cosecant squared y. Whatever is here ends up being here, okay? Even though our formula on our paper says cotangent x goes to negative cosecant squared x, whatever's here ends up here. So this is negative cosecant squared y, then I have to times that by dy over dx because I took the derivative of something with a y in it. And so now I'm going to divide both sides by negative cosecant squared y. And here's why there's answer choices on this one, even though it's a review, is because now that we're here, it may be that we would have wanted to move the cosecant squared y up to the top, which would have been fine, and made it sine squared y on top. But if I look at my answer choices, it actually has what I have right now, which is b. They move the negative in front of the whole fraction, which is fine. 3x squared's on top, cosecant squared y is on bottom. So that's my answer. Number five is like, 
don't want to ruin it for you, but it's like the worst problem ever. This is cosine of xy, which means that we're going to chain rule this when I take the derivative of it. And so the chain rule is where we say what's on the outside, which in this case is cosine, and what's on the inside, in this case that's xy. So we take the derivative of the outside, which is cosine, and we get negative sine. And whatever originally was inside of our trig function has to still be inside of our trig function. So the derivative of the outside is negative sine of xy. We're going to times that by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of xy requires us to use the product rule. So this is going to be 1, which is x, times 2, or d2, the derivative of y is 1 dy over dx plus 2 times the derivative of the first thing, which is just 1. This is all just the chain rule for this first part. Then the rest of this, the derivatives are pretty easy, like it's plus 3x squared and equals 3y squared dy over dx. Remember, if we take the derivative of x, we don't need to do anything, but if I take the derivative of y, I have to put dy over dx next to it. So what I need to do probably is, is clean this and this up so it looks nicer. So this is negative sine xy times x dy over dx plus y. And then I'm going to distribute my trig function because I need dy over dx to be by itself on the same side and I can't do that right now because I can't get it out of the parentheses unless I distribute. So when I distribute negative sine xy to x dy over dx, those x's can't go together because the xy is protected by sine. So it'd be better if I take the x and put it in front as negative x sine xy dy over dx and then distribute the y so I'm going to put the y in front also so now I can get the terms that have dy over dx on the same side it'd be faster if I move this over to the right side <laughs> Sorry. So I move that over, and so on the left side I have negative y sine xy plus 3x squared equals 3y squared dy over dx plus x sine xy dy over dx and at this point you may just be able to look at the answer choices what we want to do is get the dy over dx factored out on the right side so it's going to be dy over dx times 3y squared plus x sine xy so that's what I'm going to divide over to the bottom so I should end up with 3x squared minus y sine xy. I just moved the 3x squared in front. So that's this side divided by this. So divided by 3y squared plus x sine xy. Look for your answer choice. And it looks like that's A. So that is like legitimately one of the worst problems ever. So I hope you enjoyed that. And let's move on to inverse trig functions on 6, 7, and 8. Inverse trig functions. The worst part about inverse trig functions is if you have to memorize the formulas for them. And so if you do, I'm sorry, but um, that's really the worst part. Is once you know what the formula is, then it's really a question of figuring out what u and u prime are. I want to point out on number 6 that in front of my sine function I have a 2 and so 
that two, since it's just a two and not two X or anything, it's just gonna hang out at the front of my problem or I'm actually just gonna add it in at the end of the problem. So what we should do as far as working this problem out goes is it would actually be pretty helpful for us to write out the formula. So the uh, formula for inverse trig is u prime over the square root of one minus u squared. And so what I need to know is what u and u prime are. u is the inside of our inverse trig function. So u is 4x cubed. u prime is the derivative of that, which is going to be 12x squared. And so I just need to plug in u and u prime into this and then see if I can simplify it all. So on top is 12x squared. On bottom is the square root of 1 minus u squared. So 4x cubed squared. And here's the thing that people mess up a lot. Although I guess based on our answer choices, you can't really mess this up on this problem. When I square 4x cubed, I square the 4 and get 16. I square the x cubed and get x to the 6th. So this is going to be 12x squared over square root of 1 minus 16x to the 6th. And then I look at my answer choices and I go, none of those are there. And then I remember, oh yeah, there is a 2 in front of this. And so that's basically like us multiplying by 2 over 1. So I'm going to do 2 times 12x squared and get 24x squared on the top. And then on the bottom, I'll have... 1 minus 16x to the 6th. So I guess you can mess this up. A is not our answer because it's not x to the 6th. Uh, B is not our answer because they got rid of the square root. C doesn't have 24x squared on top. So D is our correct answer. So now that we notice the 2 in front on sign, this 1.9, what that's going to do is at the end, it's going to multiply whatever we have by 1.9 over 1. So the inverse cosine formula is actually almost the exact same as sine, it's just negative on top. And so that means our formula is negative u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So u is what's inside of inverse cosine, which is 2t. u prime is the derivative of 2t, which is 2. Hopefully it doesn't throw you off that they use t instead of x's. It doesn't matter what letter, um, as long as we just use that letter the whole time. Don't, I mean, you could switch it to x, but then you'd have to pretend like the t's and the answer choices were x's, so it's kind of pointless. Anyway, though, um, this will be negative 2 over the square root of 1 minus 2t squared. And then don't forget, we're going to times this by 1.9 over 1. So the top of this is negative 3.8. The bottom is the square root of 1 minus 2 squared is 4, and t squared is t squared. Um, they moved the negative in front of our fraction, and so it has to be c because it's negative, and 3.8 on top, square root of 1 minus 4t squared on bottom. The final of our inverse trig functions, you can do secant, cosecant, and cotangent. That just They just don't happen to show up on this set of problems. So the formula for tangent is u prime over 1 plus u squared, which I'm pretty sure you can get that by putting... Actually, I take that back. Never mind. Forget I said anything. So u is square root of 3x. But the problem with that is that when I take the derivative of that, I probably need to rewrite this as 3x to the 1 half. A mistake I see a lot of people make is not putting the parentheses around 3x. It's not just x that's under the square root. All of this is under the square root. These parentheses are important because it lets me know that I need to do the chain rule to get u prime. So by that I mean I have an outside of 1 half power and an inside of 3x. So I have to do the derivative of the 1 half power, which gives me 1 half times 
my parentheses to the negative one half. What's inside of the parentheses is what's originally inside, which is 3x. And then I times this by the derivative of the inside, which is 3. So if I want to rewrite this a little bit nicer, I can make it be 3 halves, 3x to the negative 1 half. And then I'm ready to fill into my formula. So u prime is going to be on top. And so on top, I'm going to put 3 halves, 3x to the negative 1 half. And on bottom, I'm going to put 1 plus u, which is, you can write it either way, the square root of 3x or 3x to the 1 half. I like to write it as the square root of 3x because then it's obvious, I think, that when I square the square root of 3x, those cancel each other out so that the bottom of this is going to be 1 plus 3x without the square root. So that immediately makes a not be an answer choice. And really it also makes c not be an answer choice because 1 plus 3x is not supposed to be under a square root, and it is on c. So now we just have to figure out the other things we have going on here. For instance, 3 halves is like timesing the whole fraction by 3 halves. So what I can do is put the 3 on top and the 2 on the bottom. And that will work out every time that you have a fraction on top, the bottom number can be moved to the bottom. The other thing though is this 3x and a 1 half, I can take all of this and move it down to the bottom so that it'll have a positive exponent. So if I do that, I'll have 3x to the positive 1 half on the bottom. And then since it's 3x to the positive 1 half, which the 1 half power is a square root, I can change it to the square root of 3x. And now, sorry, now I can see that my answer is d. Because I have 2, 1 plus 3x, and the square root of 3x all on the bottom. And 3 is on top. So that one, that one is tricky, um, to be perfectly honest. It's a, it's a bit of a doozy, but... Oh well, 9 through, uh, I don't even know what number, we're going to start doing exponential and logarithmic functions, their derivatives, and so these formulas are relatively easy compared to like the inverse trig ones. On e to some power, our formula is e to the u times u prime. And so I just need to know what u is. It's 9x. u prime is 9. And then fill in my formula. So this is e to the 9x times 9. And so we'd probably just rewrite that as 9e to the 9x. I'm going to do the same thing with 10. My formula is still e to the u times u prime. u is 7x over 6. And so a lot of people get tripped up by this. You could use the quotient rule to figure out what this is, or you could say 7x over 6 is really 7 sixths times x. So just like if I took the derivative of 7x, I'd get 7. The derivative of 7 sixths x is 7 sixths. So that means that I have e to the 7x over 6 times 7 over 6. And then I just rearrange that 7 over 6, e to the 7x over 6. Ta-da! Uh, number 11. So while we can use that formula from 9 and 10, it is helpful just to remember that the der if I take the derivative of e to the x, I get e to the x for problems like this. We have a product rule here with 2x and e to the x. 2x is our first thing, e to the x is our second thing, so this will be... I haven't been writing dy over dx, but um, technically all of these would be dy over dx equals, uh, but hey, it's whatever. Um, 1d2, so I'm going to write down the first thing, and then times it by the derivative of e to the x, which the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, plus 2, which is e to the x, times the derivative of 2x, which is 2, 
Now, the second part of this, the derivative of negative 2 e to the x, that negative 2 in front, since it's just a number and doesn't have an x with it, it just multiplies. It's like having a negative 2 here puts a negative 2 here. That's not an exponent, like negative 2 e to the x. So I'm going to put minus 2 e to the x. Now let's see if we can simplify this at all. We can move that 2 in front. Oh look, I have like terms. These are both e to the x's. I can do 2 minus 2 and get 0. So they cancel each other out, and so my answer is just 2xe to the x. Twelve. This is a similar formula. Now we don't have e. We have some number, and it can be any number. And so the derivative of that is a to the u times ln of a times u prime. And so the only thing that's really different there is that because it's not e, we have to put ln of our number, natural log of whatever the base is. Otherwise, it's going to work out pretty much the same. So in this problem, u is x, and u prime is 1, and a is 2 because it's our base. So fill all that in, 2 to the x times ln of 2 times 1. And so that's pretty much just 2 to the x times ln of 2. And that's our answer. How neat is that? Let's try 13. Same formula. So this time u is negative x, which makes u prime negative 1. a is 11. So fill in your formula, 11 to the negative x times ln of 11 times u prime. So I'm going to move the negative to the very front. This is negative 11 to the negative x times ln of 11. And that's my answer. 8 to the cosine x. Ooh, this looks super tricky. a to the u times ln of a times u prime. u is cosine x. What a horrible exponent to have. u prime is the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x. a is 8. Let's fill in our formula. So we get 8 to the cosine x times ln of 8 times u prime, which is negative sine x. What we just did was like a was basically the chain rule, by the way. In fact, almost all of these problems, that's what we're basically doing is the chain rule. We have what we originally would have had, and then we're timesing it by the derivative of the inside, which is cosine x. So what I'm going to do is move the negative in front, and then otherwise just leave it alone. ln8 sine x. You could put it in a different order. Almost all of these you could put in a different order. Um, just don't try to combine like the 8 and the x or something because 8 is inside the natural log, x is inside of sine, and you can't do anything about those two things. 15, so this starts our natural logarithm stuff, and so um, if we're taking the derivative of the natural log of u, that's going to be 1 over u times u prime. So in this problem, u is x minus 4. The derivative of u, which is u prime, is 1. So this will be 1 over x minus 4 times 1, which is just 1 over x minus 4. So here, 7x squared is u. So our formula is 1 over u times u prime u is 7x squared, u prime is 14x, and then 1 over 7x squared times 14x. So this u prime, if it's not a fraction, we'd put it over 1. So this is 14x over 7x squared, and then let's simplify, because 14 and 7 are both divisible by 7, so that gives us 2 on top x and x squared, you can take out an x and be left with an x on the bottom. So really this is just 2 over x. Oh, 
oh, this looks bad, but it's really not that bad. So our formula is 1 over u times u prime. u is what's inside of our natural log. So u is ln of 9x. u prime is the derivative of ln of 9x. But that's like another u and u prime. Like this is now u, and then 9 would be u prime. So what I have to do whenever I write this is do 1 over 9x times 9. And so my 9's cancel. So u prime is really 1 over x. So 1 over ln of 9x times the derivative of ln of 9x, which is 1 over x. All I can do with that is like put the x in front. I can't make it x squared because I can't put this x inside my natural log. Can't take the other x outside my natural log. So that would be my answer. If it's not a natural log and it's a regular logarithm, the way that changes our formula is we put ln of a, a being our base, on bottom with our u. That's the only thing that's different. So in this problem, a is 4, u is 16x, and u prime is 16. And so I'm going to fill this in. 1 over 16x ln of 4 times u prime, which is 16. So these 16s can cancel each other out, and we're left with 1 over x ln of 4. So these last two problems are going to be over logarithmic differentiation. Both of these problems, um, you would need to use logarithmic differentiation to do them. There's not another simpler way, and I'm just trying to like trick you or something into using this. When you see the word logarithmic differenti differentiation, your first thought should be to take the natural log of both sides. So this is going to be natural log of y equals natural log of cosine x to the x. And then we're going to use a property of logarithms that says I can move the exponent in front so that this is ln of y equals x ln of cosine x. So at this point I'm ready to differentiate. So I'm going to use implicit differentiation because I have something with y that needs the derivative that I need the derivative of. So the derivative of the natural log of y is 1 over y. The, der the derivative of the natural log of just a letter in general is 1 over that letter. So 1 over y, but I took the derivative of y, so that's dy over dx. Then I've got a product rule. x is my first thing. Natural log of cosine x is my second thing. It's important to understand that the natural log is always of something. There can never be, like there's never nothing here. That doesn't work. There always has to be an x or something else inside. So I'm not doing natural log times cosine x. I'm doing natural log of cosine x. So this product rule is going to be 1d2. So x times, now let's think about the derivative of the natural log of cosine x. This is where I have 1 over u times u prime. u is cosine x, so that's 1 over cosine x times the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x. And we'll come back and simplify that once we're done with the product rule plus 2, which is ln of cosine x, times the derivative of x, which is 1. So now we are going to just clean this right side of stuff up. And so what I can do is I can make this be x times, I can put the negative sine x on top of cosine x, I can actually even move the negative into the very front, so it's negative x times sine x over cosine x, and then I can say, hey, sine x over cosine x, that's tangent x. So I really have negative x tangent x, and then I don't need the one that's at the end of this. Now I am ready to times both sides by y. When I do that, you got to put the whole right side in parentheses. 
And so now I have dy over dx equals negative x tangent x plus natural log of cosine x. But instead of writing y on the outside, I'm going to say, hey, I know what y is. y is really cosine x to the x. So I'm going to put that where y was. Is now everything on the right side is x's. There aren't any y's, which is a good thing in math. So this is my answer. Number 20 is the same type of problem. It actually, I think, might be easier because of the function that we have. Being x to the 4x, there's not a cosine or a natural... Well, no, we're going to put natural log. So there's not a cosine. That's always helpful. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Then I'm going to do my trick of moving my exponent. Whoa, that, that was too far. Moving my exponent in front of my natural log. So this is natural log of y equals x natural log, oh, 4x natural log of x. And then I'm going to take the derivative. So the natural log of y is 1 over y times dy over dx. I'm going to do product rule. So I'm going to write 4x times the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x, plus ln of x times the derivative of 4x, which is 4. So what's going to happen here is 4x is over 1. So my x's will cancel, and I'm left, I'm left with 4 plus 4 ln of x. And so I need to times both sides by y. So this is going to be times y. And then I go back, and instead of writing y, I'm going to put x to the 4x. So my answer is dy over dx equals 4 plus 4 ln of x, x to the 4x. And that is logarithmic differentiation. That's our entire review for 3.7 to 3.9. So um, that's pretty exciting. Have a great rest of your day or evening or afternoon or morning or whenever it is you're watching this.